Very good morning from the Isle of Wight. We're heading down to Bembridge Lifeboat Station here on the uh, east, on the northeast coast of uh, the Isle of Wight. There's a beautiful glow in the skies. Just coming up to uh, six o'clock in the morning at the moment. And we're going to go and see what sort of a sunrise we can get down there this morning. Now, unfortunately, it's not a great deal of cloud in the sky, but there's a, already out the front here, which I can't show you because I'm driving, is a lovely orange glow. So we're hoping we can pick that up once we get down to the uh, the beach. Now, the Bembridge Lifeboat Station is uh, a big pier that juts right out to sea, um, which just makes for some really nice uh, photo opportunities. We did come down here about uh, six, eight months ago. Got some lovely shots, so I'll post those up here right uh, now just so you can see what they look like. So we're going to try and get something very similar uh, this morning. It's always a bit touch and go with uh, sunrises. You never quite know what you're going to get till you get down there. So uh, in a minute we'll hop out, we'll wander down to the beach and then I will uh, speak to you in a, in a second. So this is Bembridge Pier. As you can see, it's absolutely beautiful morning down here. It falls on the stones and it is low tide, but it's actually giving us an absolutely stunning reflection in the water down here. So what we're going to do is try and head down the beach a little bit here and see if we can pick up some of the, the lighting in the reflections. Absolutely beautiful. So I'm so glad I made the effort to come down here this morning. The sun is due to come up at uh, uh, about half an hour from now, so we've got a little bit of time just to work with the, the colours before the sun comes up. It's always fun when you come down Sandy Beach trying to keep your kit always uh, clean. So we're going to try and be a little bit careful, otherwise you end up with everything full of sand by the time we get back. This is my lightweight uh, travel tripod, the Manfredo B3, which is very good. I've had it for quite a while now. I just changed the ball head on there to uh, Put the quick release arc, a Swiss one on there. So, camera mounted. What oh, a beautiful morning. Got the filters in the pocket just in case. So just to give you an idea of what we're shooting here, that's pretty much the, uh, the view we're going for. So on the uh, so on the camera here at the moment, I've got it set at the lowest ISO, so 100. Uh, I've got the level on the camera to make sure we've got the horizon level. Um, the f-stop at the moment is set at f point uh, f8. And then I've just composed photograph if this picks it up as so and then just to get the exposure right I'm adjusting the, the shutter speed just to make sure the highlights are not uh, totally exposed and then I'm just going to set the, uh, the shutter delay so when I press it it's given me two seconds of uh, time just to make sure the camera's nice and still when it takes that uh, takes that shot so I'm just going to fire off the first photo of the morning and I focused about a third into it at the moment and then I'll zoom in and just make sure that that has picked up the focus point for me. A quick preview of it. Nice. What I might do is try and get a bit further down to the water's edge down here. The trouble with sunrises, I always find, is trying to find a good composition because you're on a bit of a time limit. It doesn't take long before it starts getting too bright and then you've missed your opportunities. So there's a nice little bit here, as you can see, 
We were just picking up the, uh, the reflection of the lifeboat station in the puddle at the beginning here. So I'm just going to try and line that shot up. Yeah, so quite happy with that. So this at the moment is uh, still ISO 100, obviously, because of the, how dark it is. I've got F8 just to try and get a bit of depth in the photo. And then we're at uh, 0.4 of a second now. And again, I'm just focusing on the puddle about a third of the way into the frame. So that's taken that. And these are all shot in raw, so. Let's have a quick preview. That's a little bit blown out on the highlights there, so we're just going to drop the shutter speed down a little bit. So if you put your blinkies on when you're taking the photographs, once you've taken the shot, you can see if there's anything that's slightly out or overexposed. Let's try that one. Yes, that one looks absolutely spot on. Let's try. And then it... So I probably tend to be a bit erratic when I take my uh, photos. I like to move around quite a bit and just try and get as many photos from uh, different viewpoints as I can, rather than just stay in in one position. So there's some stunning clouds on that side as well. So maybe we'll try and get the lifeboat station just into the right of the picture and just try and capture some of the cloud in the water down here. So I'm going to head right down. And probably what I'm going to do now is just drop the camera right down low just so we can pick up the reflection there with the clouds in the background. Yeah. What a beautiful morning. I say sometimes you just have to take the chance and get out first thing in the morning here to come down and uh, get get these shots. And when you stop and listen, it is, apart from the boats out in the Casolan here and the seagulls, there's not a sound. It's absolutely beautiful. Good morning. So, so we're going to get nice and low now. I want to try and pick up a lot of the reflection that's down in the water here. Maybe even a bit further down than that. I'll probably use my other tripod, my little pixie, but that's where you're viewing from at the moment. So I haven't got that option this morning. Further forward. So this is the view that we're trying to capture down here. And again, even as we're talking, the sun's getting brighter, or lighting the sky up and brighter and brighter, so just adjusting that shutter speed on there. I'm hoping I'm going to be able to bring out the, the shadows a bit in the post as I'm shooting this in raw on the, here. And if you can see this, um, what I've done is I've set the touch bar up on this ESR, so the right-hand side I can just tap and it brings up my histogram and on the left hand side I touch and it just brings up the level so I can actually quickly get rid of those on there. Um, that was a little tip by uh, a chap who takes some awesome pictures as well down on the coast called DTG uh, Photos. Um, I'll put a link up here, it's worth checking out, he's got some absolutely stunning seascape stuff. Uh, that's the, the uh, so that's the photo that I've got. Um, as you can see, I've got no blinkies on there, so it's just starting to get a bit brighter around the uh, right inside of the pier now. Uh, but we're getting some lovely colours in the reflection, and obviously the reflection of the lifeboat station there, which makes a really uh, great picture. And I've got lots of settings that I fill around with this camera now. So what I'll do is, is um, I'll do a video and just show you the settings that I've got. It might be useful for you guys to have a look at and uh, just give you some ideas of configuring the ESR up, although it is a very personal choice. It's just whatever works with your uh, workflow on there. But uh, the touch bar, a bit of a bone of controversy about this uh, camera, but I do like the fact that uh, you can just well, touch the right and left to bring up the horizontal horizon and also the histogram. I think it's uh, really good. And then you can get rid of them very quickly if you need to then uh, view 
uh, the main picture on the screen. Uh, we're just going to have a quick zoom in, make sure that looks fairly sharp. So I'll just put the tripod down a little bit lower now just to try and get work with the two, two thirds. One of the annoying things with uh, the eye detection on here, every time we pass by it knocks the screen off, which you can disable on there. So I've got the horizon line now in the, uh, the, the top third or thereabouts. And we're just going to adjust again. I haven't changed the ISO, it's still at 100. And one third of a second now, so again, as it's getting brighter, just having to change that. And F8. So just fitting the uh, case filters at the moment on here. Just uh, give the polarizer its chance to shine. The nice thing with these case filters is, is the polarizer drops in magnetically and then you have a little wheel just to adjust on the right. So on this shot, it's just starting to get a bit too light. I don't want to put a um, or graduated ND filter on this one just because the pier on there. So I could do it as a double exposure and then in uh, Photoshop I'm going to blend the two images uh, afterwards. So the first shot is going to be basically exposed for the sky. So that's at uh, 1 40th of a second. Again I just focused on the rock ahead there. I'm not quite happy with that. And then I'm just going to lighten that up. So we're coming back now to about one fifteenth of a second. So that's now just trying to expose for the foreground on there. And now I'll just do one. You could do this with exposure bracketing, I guess. But so you're just starting to lose the uh, the colours now, which is a real shame. As you see, it's getting quite light down here in the uh, in the puddles. Or the low water. That is a shame. Should have come down maybe 10 minutes earlier to have picked up a few more. But we've got a good sh few shots in there, so uh, which is quite good. It's just starting to get a bit of bright behind the uh, pier now, just where the sun's coming up. So the little app I'm using at the moment just to work out the the sun rise positions, uh, the times. Um, I'll show it down here and just put a link. I can't remember off the top of my head what it is at uh, the moment. So while I'm walking down here, I will show you an image of what I used this morning. So as you can see, it's just used on the, you basically position the GPS over where you need to be. And then it gives you the sunset time, golden hour, etc. And you can sort of plan your shots to a certain extent. Uh, down there. Oh, there's a nice little boat out here. That'll be quite good if you can see it. I'm not quite sure we can get out to it too. That'll look quite nice in the foreground with that in the background. Sometimes it's worth wandering around like this just to see what you can find. So this looks exceedingly muddy down here. So I'm not even sure if we can get out to it, which is a real shame. It looks like this. I need my wellies on. Yeah, that's a real shame. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little rowing boat, motorboat there just outside. But unfortunately, there's a, a river of water here, which without wellies, I've got absolutely zilcho chance of getting across. And it's quite deep. Bugger, that's a shame. It's uh, really thick, not what you normally get from uh, low tide on the beach but here it's like really thick like almost like river mud down here so I'm absolutely caked in it on my feet here but there is just no way through if we can get far enough up here maybe we can uh, get it into frame there's a little outcrop just up here so maybe we can get it from that point I've got to be quick because the sun's going to be up very shortly that's probably going to be my only chance what a shame. Oh, 
why I'm talking quietly, because there's no one else around. Yeah, OK, let's give that a go. Oh, it's so boggy. I really do not want to lose my camera in this at the moment. What's the time now? So we've got around about... Uh, oh, Chris. We've got about five or six minutes now before the sun just comes up over there. And then apart from sunburst shots, we are a little bit limited. So the colour's definitely gone out of the... Uh, out of the sky. It's got quite flat now. So this might be my last photo. Oh, that's quite nice. So we can zoom in a bit. Ugh, sand everywhere. Sand on my camera, not good. So again, I'm going to do a double exposure on this one and try and recover it using the raw files in uh, post. But we've lost that orange glow now, which is a real shame. Nice thing is, it's nice and flat, so I don't have to worry about using ND filters this morning. Just, just reviewing that, the peel is a little bit out of focus. It's not the nicest photograph, but as we're here, we'll make the most of it. And if you can see, just on the left over there, the sun just making its uh, appearance over the horizon. It's coming up pretty quick this morning, actually. We have it, sunrise on uh, Benbridge. Sun coming up. Lost all the colour now, it's very flat, which is a real shame. As I said, I should have come down a few, probably a few minutes earlier this morning because that colour off the water and the sky was absolutely stunning. I've got a few good shots in there, I'm hoping, so uh, I'll put them up at the end of the video. Uh, you can have a look. So what I might do before we head back to the car is I'm just going to wander back and just see if I can get a sunburst with the sun on the, uh, on the actual pier itself. So the colour's pretty much gone out of the sky now. So... We're going to traipse back through the mud. That's the first time I've been down here at low tide. And it is, as I said earlier, very, very muddy. I almost brought the dog with me this morning, but I'm quite glad I didn't because he'd be absolutely covered now, which would have made my life talking to you guys and trying to do this a little bit, uh, a little bit more hard work, which is not what you want when you're on such a short time limit down here in the morning. So if you ever do come down here, there's some old, what they class them as, sticks, water, jetty, but you can get some lovely shots down here. I put a picture up here of uh, what I'm talking about so you can see, and this was taken uh, earlier on uh, in the year. You can get some quite nice effect there with the pebbles and the beach with the sunburst on there. And if you haven't shot sunburst before, what you'll need to do is uh, Depending on your camera, but put your f-stop up to about 20, 22, or maybe a bit higher, depending. And then adjust your ISO and your shutter speed accordingly for that. And then you should get the, the flare off of the lens just as the sun's peeking through or around uh, a solid object. And it just gives a nice effect sometimes. So this is what I'm going to try and do back up here. There's the boat that I was talking about. But with the, the water there, I just can't get to it, which is such a shame. So we'll go for a more artistic shot now with the sunburst, if we can make it work. And it's still now about 6.43, the sun's come up, and that, the app was within a few minutes of giving me guidance on that. So these little mobile apps we have nowadays are just so great for helping you to do these... Uh, landscape shots so that'll be quite nice through there but I don't know whether there's enough of a drop on that no all right more squidgy rocks just trying to gain a bit of height now because that sun's coming up so fast but I'm probably going to miss it I might even have to have sit on the top of the breakwater up here and who says you need to go to the gym uh, supposed to be a leisurely activity, this landscape photography. What I might do is head up onto the pier up here. I might put my big zoom lens on and then get a little bit closer shot, just try something a little bit different. There we go. So you can see there, I've just positioned myself so that the sun is just 
appearing around the side there. So thanks for joining me down here for this sunrise at uh, Pembridge this morning. It's been uh, great having you along. I'm going to head back now for a cup of coffee, a bit of breakfast. So uh, if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel, give it a like and uh, we'll catch up with you soon. So have a great day.